Then you'll marry me. You'll marry me, you will. I will. I will. My darling, my love, Elise. Oh. Why do you sigh? And at this moment when you've made me the happiest man in the whole wide world, why do you sigh so deeply? I sigh, Blair, when I think of my father. How angry he'll be, demented. There'll be paroxysms of rage. I dare not imagine what he'll say or do. And my family, how they'll disapprove. And the world, the world too will censure me. When I think of these things, I sigh. But I sigh deeply when I remember you'll not always love me as much as you do now. That's true enough. Belair! Oh, my dear, I shall love you more and more and more. Suspect me of anything you will. Believe me capable of any crime, but not of that. Not of failing you. Never, never, never of failing you. All men say such things. It's what we do that matters. You must believe me. I believe you. And if I were told that would be a miracle, I would reply, I still believe in miracles. So I'll not sigh deeply. I'll just sigh. But why sigh at all? My dearest, if only others knew you as I know you, all you've given up, forsaken, your home, your country, your family, your fortune to take service in my father's house. I left my country, too, but it, it can hardly be said I left my family. I lost them. Still no news? Well... Blair, news. Good, bad. Neither. Perhaps not even news. An old friend who knew them well and to whom I've given the charge of continuing the search has sent word. A hint, perhaps, no more that they may, may be yet alive. But, my dearest, why didn't you tell me? Well, I've been wondering. Yes? Whether I ought not to go myself and follow up this hint. And leave me? For the time being. Blair, this friend, you can trust him? Absolutely. He can do everything you can do? Yes. Oh, don't leave me. If you were to leave my father's services now, he'd never take you back. And then how could I be with you? Oh, stay here close to me and do your best to win my father's love? To win your father's love? Yes. Impossible. But why? He has no love to win. No love for anything or anybody but his money bags. Forgive me, I have no right to speak to you so of your father. But it's true. Only so horribly, ridiculously true. But how highly he thinks of you. And how easily his good opinion has been won. Oh yes, I'm learning an awful lot in this rather unusual situation of mine. I'm learning that if you want a man to like you, all you have to do is make him believe that you think as he thinks, feel as he feels, like what he likes. Especially, you have to applaud his stupidities and shortcomings, <laughs> praise his follies, and above all, flatter. Flatter, flatter, flatter. At every moment, and all the time, in every way, you can't overdo flattery. <laughs> the more outrageous it is, the more they like it. The most cunning, the most suspicious are deceived by it. There's nothing so outrageous that they won't swallow with a great deal of flattery. As it is, one's own integrity may suffer somewhat, but I flatter myself that the fault lies with the flatterer, not the flatterer. But, my dearest, why don't you seek the love of my brother? Why, well, that's impossible too. Surely not. Your brother is so exactly the opposite to your father in all he says and does and is, I couldn't handle the two of them. But your idea is a good one. Why don't you take him into your confidence and tell him? Of us? Yes, here he comes. I dare not, I haven't the courage. My dear, you would gain his sympathy and I his help. Now I must go. I have my work to do. Sister, thank God I found some old I know what he'd say. So do I. Do you mean you think he'd agree with you? I'm sure. Come here. My daughter and I are having a little disagreement, a little dispute, if you We want you to tell us which one of us is in the right. My master, there can be no doubt. And what do you mean by that? Master, the profound depths of your experience versus the shallows of her youth and inexperience. Good. Very good. What did I tell you? He agrees with me. But he doesn't even know what we're talking about. No, but he thinks I'm right. <laughs> Monsieur Valère, please listen to what my father has to say. At your service. And in yours, Master. Well, now, listen to this. You know the good Signor Ansel, the old gentleman who lives in the big house at the other end of the town. Well, yes, he lives in the big house at the other end of the town. A most 
worthy gentleman. So I have heard. Your judgment of him does you credit. Well, the good senor boasts to me that he should marry my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> marry your daughter? He's surprised. So was I. Quite taken aback. <laughs> but of course I accept it. And now the young baggage says she'll have none of it. Have you ever heard anything so outrageous? No, no, I never heard anything so outrageous. <laughs> what did I tell you? I can hardly believe my ears. He can hardly believe his ears. And he means it. You can hear it in his voice. Don't you? I do, I do. Indeed I do. Does Monsieur Valer really think I should marry Senor Anselm? I'd hear it from his own lips. Very well, then. Go on, tell her. Plainly. In your own words. Yeah. I shall marry Senor Anselm. This evening. This evening? This very evening. Ah, oh, young man, let's hear you. Well, as I've said, there can be no denying that your father must be right. He knows what he's talking about. But at the same time, it might be said in a kind of way that your daughter is right, too. My daughter is right, too? Don't be a damn fool. We can't both be right. Well, she might say you were going a little fast. Eh? Too fast for her. Your vision being so much quicker and finer in perception than hers, she is not as yet, the certainty that makes for unhesitating assent. Whereas, given a little more time... Impossible! No time to spare. There's a little something about this offer that makes it unique. If he takes her at once, he takes her without a dowry. Without a dowry? Oh, I thought that would rumple your feathers. I thought I'd take the wind out of your sails without a dowry. Why, then I must say... You see, there's nothing more to be said. Nothing? Nothing. Although she might say that marriage being a lifelong affair, and her whole happiness or unhappiness for the rest of her life depending on it, and taking into account the great disparity in their ages... Without a dowry? Yes, of course. That's unanswerable. Right, as usual, my dear Belair. Unanswerable. Though she might answer, that there might be some fathers who would consider their daughter's happiness rather than what they could save on them, <laughs> who would shrink from sacrificing them to a bank account, <laughs> might even desire for them all the deep joy, the inner content, and the peace of mind that only a successful marriage can bring. Without a dowry! <laughs> <laughs> but it must be a marriage of love, love that grows and unfolds throughout the year, Roots like a great tree, so that all the winds of misfortune may blow upon it and only give it new vigor. Yes, yes, yes. I know all that. But he's in a hurry. <clears throat> he wants immediate possession. We must make use of that. What's that? What's what? The, the sound in the garden. Didn't you hear it? I heard nothing. A dog barked. I may have imagined it. You didn't hear it? No. You're sure? I heard it distinctly. I thought so. That means there's someone in the garden. I won't have people in the garden. Stay here. I'll be back in a moment. Valer, don't you realize that if you agree with my father, I shall be married to somebody else? To this evening? If I should have disagreed with him, I should have been dismissed on the spot. As it is, here I am to prevent it. How? We shall escape from this marriage together into our own, if your love and your trust in me are enough. Need you ask? My dear woman, my dear, dear woman, you ought to thank God this has happened. Down on your knees, girl, and thank God that your husband is such a man as he is, wanting you so much that he'll not wait a moment longer than he need. Oh, pardon, master, that I should speak to your daughter in this way. My feelings carried me away. Oh, go <laughs> on, my boy, go on. Tell her exactly how you feel. And you, you, and listen to me. Perhaps you'll listen to him? <clears throat> yes, Father. Never shall I forget what Monsieur Valère has just said to me. Ah, splendid, splendid. I must go and make the arrangements with the good Signor. Valère, I leave her in your charge. Master, I may have to be a bit familiar with her. As familiar as you wish. <laughs> Very well. Into the next room, if you